Hello everybody. Today we are going to talk about uh, management of open bite malocclusions. Okay, the learning outcomes of this lecture will be at the end of this lecture, the student should be able to analyze the etiology and the clinical features of open bite malocclusion and as well as formulate the treatment plan for open bite malocclusion. Now, what is mal meant by open bite? Okay, this term was coined by Caravalli in 1842. Now, normally the upper incisors overlap vertically the lower incisors. Now, when there is a lack of vertical overlap between the upper and uh, lower incisor teeth in centric occlusion, then the condition is termed as open bite. Now, open bite can be classified either as skeletal or dental, and each of these can be further classified into anterior uh, open bite or a posterior open bite. The posterior open bite can be a unilateral open bite or it can be a bilateral open bite. Now let's have a look at anterior open bite. Now as I mentioned, the upper anterior teeth normally overlaps the lower anterior teeth by about 2 mm. Now in an, in an anterior open bite situation, there is no vertical overlap between the upper anterior teeth and the lower anterior teeth. Okay, what are the etiological factors of an anterior open bite? They can be classified in two big groups is either genetic factors or environmental factors. Now genetic factors means that means uh, an abnormal growth pattern and usually this is uh, because of a counterclockwise rotation of the maxilla or a clockwise rotation of the mandible or it can be a combination of both okay and the fourth factor is a vertical maxillary excess this is a excessive vertical growth of the maxilla now the environmental factors are one is habits and this is usually digit or thumb sucking habits and this causes the upper anterior teeth to become proclined and the maxillary arch is narrow and this results in a open bite relationship. Now functional Factors are either can be an abnormal tongue function, which is tongue truss. Now, a tongue truss uh, proclines the upper anterior teeth and cause flaring of the upper teeth, leading to an open bite condition. A mouth breathing caused by nasopharyngeal obstruction, meaning a obstruction somewhere along the airway can also lead to procline upper anterior teeth and a more open bite uh, condition. Okay, uh, an increased tongue size also known as macroglossia can also give rise to an open bite condition. Now, uh, in, uh, macroglossia can either be inherited or it can be uh, acquired secondary to diseases such as for example primary amyloidosis. Now an increased tongue in causes increased pressure on the lingual surfaces of the anterior teeth and leading to an anterior open bite. Okay. Other etiological factors, uh, factors that can cause uh, open, bite, open bite malocclusion is a condylar trauma or pathology. A fracture of the condylar neck due to trauma will cause displacement of the condylar head. 
This displacement is caused by the action of the lateral pterygoid muscle and this and the fractured condylar fragment is displaced anterior medially. Now this leads to a loss of mandibular height on the fracture side and what results is premature contact on the ipsilateral most distal tooth causing a open bite condition anteriorly. Okay. Also, uh, factors that can cause uh, open bite condition are neurological disturbances. Okay, and some of these neurological conditions uh, lead to a low muscle tonicity. For example, in cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy, and any other muscle weakness syndromes, and this leads uh, to an open bite condition. There are also iatrogenic, iatrogenic causes to uh, which leads to an open bite condition. For example, uh, all forms of orthodontic treatment causes some amount of extrusion of the teeth and uh, improper use of intermaxillary elastics during orthodontic treatment can also lead to uh, open bite condition and poorly designed uh, vacuum form retainers whereby the occlusal coverage doesn't extend right up to the last teeth can also ri give rise to a open bite condition and improper reduction of facial bone fractures also leads to open bite condition what are the clinical features of a dental anterior open bite? Usually the open bite is confined to the anterior segment or knee. The upper and lower teeth are both proclined and the spacing between the anterior teeth due to splaying. The maxillary arch is commonly narrowed. All this gives rise to a fish mouth appearance. The extra oral features, the extra oral features are incompetent lips. There may be everted lips, increased anterior facial height and or reduced posterior facial height, increased lower anterior facial height or and or reduced upper anterior facial height, and increased Frankfurt mandibular plane angle. There is reduced nasolabial angle and a shallow mentolabial sulcus. Now the cephalometric features of a skeletal anterior open bite are is clockwise rotation of the mandible or counterclockwise rotation of the maxilla. There is vertical maxillary excess and a steep or increased maxillomandibular plane angle. Okay, intraoral features of a skeletal open bite and it's a narrow maxillary arch and there may be anterior and or and or posterior open bite. There will be excessive gingival display and there is usually a reduced freeway space. Now how do we treat an anterior open bite? Okay, one principle of treatment is to remove the causative factor. In the situation where there is a digit uh, a habit like for example tongue, thumb or digit sucking habit or anterior tongue thrusting or mouth breathing habit, the use of a habit breaking appliances, uh, appliances to break the habit followed by use of fixed appliances to correct the open bite condition. Okay. Anterior open bites are, uh, especially due to skeletal factors are difficult to treat and they are prone to relapse. Uh, it is more successful for mild to moderate anterior open bite. Now, treatment involves use of fixed orthodontic appliances 
and what is achieved with these appliances is actually intrusion of the posterior teeth and or the extrusion of the anterior teeth and this can be achieved by the use of uh, bite closing curves on the arch wire and or use of box elastics in the anterior part of the dentition. Now, treatment of anterior open bite in a growing patient can be done use with the use of myofunctional appliances. Examples are Frankel 4, a modified activator, and this usually achieves intrusion of posterior teeth with the incorporation of posterior bite blocks. Now, in a growing patient where the open bite condition is due to uh, uh, word, uh, excessive vertical maxillary growth, the orthopedic appliance can be used combined with a head care for vertical growth control. Examples of these appliances are the Teosha appliance, Van Beek appliance or a chin cup with a vertic incorporating a vertical pull head gear. In an adult patient whereby there is no growth and if the anterior open bite is moderate to severe, uh, one modality of treatment is to do orthognathic surgery. Usually this will be a LEFO1 procedure with a differential impaction of the maxilla. The maxilla is impacted posteriorly and or we could also use a, a segmental approach to the maxilla. Now, posterior open bite. This is also known as a lateral open bite and this refers to the lack of contact between the posterior teeth when the teeth is in centric occlusion. It posterior open bite may be unilateral or bilateral. It is less common than anterior open bite. Initially, it is accompanied by a class 3 malocclusion or facial asymmetry. Now, etiology of posterior open bites. Okay, there are five main factors. One is failure of eruption. And this can be mechanical failure of eruption or a primary failure of eruption. The second factor is a functional factor due to the abnormal habit of the tongue or masseter muscle. Third factor is temporomandibular joint conditions and this is usually due to some form of joint effusion and which can be due to conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis. It can be hemoarthrosis and or also posterior disc displacement. The fourth factor is mandibular advancement therapy and this is usually undertaken for the treatment of uh, obstructive sleep apnea. And the, and the posterior bite plane is a side effect of such therapy. Now, uh, the last factor is syndromes or class 3 malocclusion. And syndromes and conditions such as amylogenesis imperfecta, achondroplasia, Apert syndrome and Duchenne muscular dystrophy can cause posterior open bite. Now, failure of eruption. Failure of eruption, the two types of failure of eruption. One is mechanical failure of eruption, whereby there is ankylosis and the cementum is fused to the alveolar bone. Usually, this affects only one tooth and it may respond to surgical luxation or orthodontic forces. Now, the other type of failure of eruption is a primary failure of eruption where there is no evidence of ankylosis and the failure is due to a defective eruption mechanism. Usually primary failure of eruption affects multiple posterior teeth and usually this 
in these situations we cannot use orthodontic forces to extrude the teeth because if that is done the teeth becomes ankylos now functional problems okay the tongue when there is a lateral tongue thrusting habit this can uh, result in an posterior open bite because the tongue interferes with the eruption of the teeth but it is not very clear whether this is this causes the posterior open bite or the tongue thrusting is the result of the posterior open bite okay the other factor is believed to be the action of the masseter muscle in certain conditions such as duchenne muscular dystrophy there is a weakness of the masseter muscle and decreased muscle tone and this plus the usually accompanying enlarged hypotonic tongue together causes a posterior open bite now how do we manage a posterior open bite again if there is an obvious cause removal of the cause is uh, is one way of um, managing the posterior open bite we can use a habit breaking appliance to to induce stoppage of the tongue thrusting habit once the habit has been stopped then it can be followed by a removable appliance or a fixed appliance therapy as you can see in the diagrams here for the uh, for the posterior open bite the spurs are at the uh, buccal area of the teeth near the premolars unlike in anterior open bite where the spurs are is in the uh, front portion of the appliance mechanical failure of eruption okay uh, they are usually enclo ankylosed and submerged teeth and we can uh, use a force extrusion of the teeth using fixed appliances or we can restore the normal occlusal level by crowning the submerged teeth or by the use of composite build up now for primary failure of eruption forced orthodontic extrusion is not possible so the, the so the normal occlusal level can be restored by either crowning the submerged teeth or extracting the submerged teeth and followed by implants okay so these are the references for the uh, topic on open bite. Okay, thank you.